Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with New Japan G1 Climax. This is day 11. We apologize for not getting day 10 up in time, but we are back. We are back on track, as some may say. And we are at 18 minutes and 15 seconds on the New Japan World Player. We will begin playing it on go. Three, two, one, go. And we're starting off with a six-man tag, and the bell just rang. Yes, and starting off this matchup are Kojima and the Intercontinental Champion Goto. Even though we missed uh, Day 10 yesterday, Ashton, you know you and I, professionals we are, we do our research, and we know that Goto yesterday lost to Shinsuke Nakamura while Kojima actually beat Hanma. So Kojima was a winner yesterday, whereas Goto was a loser so very interesting positions that these two men find themselves in, in their block, in this tournament. Poor Hanma. He's never going to win a match again. And now there you see Goto there with the shoulder block, goes off the ropes. Kojima, Kojima there, nice transition. Goes for the hip toss. Goto goes for the hip toss. Kojima punched in the face, punched in the, yeah. Nice and forearm shoulder there. Block. Nice. And it looks like this is kind of like a house show setup where they have just like the single camera view and no commentary. Yeah, it looks very dark in there and everything. It's kind of an off-putting view, just a little bit to me. And I here dig it. Com- I dig it. It feels indie. And here comes Nagata. Nagata, who, and if I'm not mistaken... comes Elgin. Nagata lost to Ishii yesterday. Which, and El- I think, if we would have known that that match was happening, I think we all would have picked Ishii to win and get back on track. I gotta say, though, Ashton, from what I saw from fans who did see that match... Uh, they said it was quite a barn burner, so one day we will have to go back and see uh, just yeah. how far to the limit Nagata took Ishii, and there's Elgin there. I, I want to go Shonders. back and I want to watch that match, and I want to watch Anderson Okada. Definitely, Okada beating Anderson. So now, guys, just to kind of set the playing field. Oh my this, God! Look at Elgin. Oh, I've never geez, seen I've never seen a, a side headlock reversed like that. Oh, and now look at that Nagata with that shoulder block, but Elgin just eats it, and then there's the forearm there, and another forearm. Good God. These Elgin two guys. tosses Nagata into the ropes, and Nagata rolls away, and a nice oh. little drop kick there to the knees. I think he faked Elgin out. I thought he was going to go for a knee to Elgin's face, then yeah. that drop kick to the knee, but then there's the shoulder block there by Elgin. And but. he goes for the elbow drop, and Nagata rolls out of the way, and Nagata goes for the kick, but Elgin kind of sits back out of the way. Elgin had it scouted, and Elgin, you could see him kind of looking at Nagata, realizing how close Nagata was to scoring that kick. But to just kind of set the scene for everybody, we now have three people in this tournament with four and one records. Shibata, Okada, and Ishii. Very interesting dynamic going on there, Ashton. Yeah, and, and, and I, Shibata has a match today against Toruyano. Uh Hopefully he manages to go five and one to retake that demanding lead over the rest of the crop but i guess we're just gonna have to wait and see for now though elgin taking it to yuji nagata absolutely elgin was successful yesterday against yujiro takahashi yeah honestly that kind of surprised me i think i if we would have been doing live commentary for that i would have probably ended up picking uh takahashi to win yeah i think i'd have to you know definitely agree with you there takahashi's been on uh, quite a role as of late. I thought he could have found a way to beat Elgin, but Elgin, when you see moves like this, it's not too surprising. The power of Elgin and just maintaining the suplex, the delayed vertical, despite interferences by both Kojima and I believe that was Yohei Komatsu and yep. now Goto and, and Mascara Dorada clearing the apron there of the opposition. Very smart. Oh, but got us count. Out. I got to tell you, Ashton, now that we have updated everybody on the day 10 standings, you know, all of the uh, the Block B tournament matchup results, now we can really look fully at day 11. What match are you looking forward to most today? The match that I'm looking forward to most today by a mile is our main event, Kota Ibushi versus Naito. That is going to be something else. And know Dorada there, nice drop kick to Nagata. I'll tell you, Dorada's been so impressive in this G1 climax, and Nagata kicks out. And I'll tell you what, Ashton, Naito, even in defeat to Makabe recently, so impressive that Kota Ibushi, he's going to be in for a rough night tonight. 
That's another match that should be interesting tonight is uh, Makabe. Do you know who his opponent is tonight? No, I do not. AJ Styles. Wow. That's going to be an interesting match. That's our semi-main, actually. So the main and the semi-main are definitely the two best-looking matches so far. Oh, look at that. Nagata with the big boot kicks Goto, but Goto catches it in the elbow to the knee. Oh, but Nagata catches him. Oh, Exploder T-Bone. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful by Nagata, and that could create the opening that he needed to make a tag either to Kojima or Yohei Komatsu, and he tags in Kojima. Probably smart by Nagata to not tag in uh, Komatsu. I mean, Komatsu very capable, but he is a young boy. And there are the lightning chops from Kojima to Goto, and Goto, his world is being set on fire right now. His world, but mostly just his chest and lungs. Oh, God. Can you imagine the difficulty to breathe while you're being hit with those chops and then the aftermath? And then what a running form there in the corner by Kojima. Kojima, I think, is thinking about that elbow drop. Oh, yeah, every time. Anytime you see him do that running forearm and then spin the guy out, that's the perfect setup, and he goes for the elbow drop every time. Absolutely. We know the two moves in Kojima's arsenal that you have to be so wary of, the Koji cutter and that Koji lariat. And now... Him and Goto just going back and forth with the forearms. Oh, uh, and Kojima gets the better of that discus forearm there. Nice. Actually sends Goto all the way to the corner there. Charges. Oh, misses the clothesline. And now if Goto. There's one, if there's one trait that I think Goto has that a lot of other guys in Japan don't have, or, or that at least they don't have as much of as Goto, it's patience. Absolutely. Goto, I definitely think it is more of a thinking man's wrestler, if you will, and it's not even in the idea that he goes hold for hold so much as he picks his spots really well. And you see there, he got the arm check there. Oh, by he wants the lariat already. He's not even going to hit the cutter. Very interesting here. And Oh, Goto caught him. Wow, the power of the Intercontinental Champion, and he drives the back of the head and neck right on the knee there, does Goto. That was brilliant. Wow, and Kojima. I love when moves like that, Ashton, when a guy like Kojima can have all the momentum in the world and feel in complete control, just lose it all like that. And that's just the ability there. And now Kamatsu and Dorada there in the ring. I think this might end up being our final pinfall combination because we all know Kamatsu is going to be the one to eat the pin in this match. <laughs> Absolutely, but I mean, I mean no mistake. He's folks, so I'm fun to watch, that. though. That spinning forearm is just awesome. He is going to be a very hot prospect within the next few years, guaranteed. Yeah. Look at that. That arm and uh, front face lock kind of suplex, and Dorada kicks out. That arm trap front face lock suplex kind of become a staple of Komatsu's offense. Now he's going to go to the top rope. But Dorada there, look at that scale in the ropes. Wow, and, and that's going to nice be the arm, arm drag. drag. Top rope that, arm drag. And he got it deep, too. He had that arm hooked in deep. And yeah, now let's did. see what... Let's see what Dorada can do here. Fireman's carry, maybe a Samoan driver. No. Oh, Komatsu, Komatsu goes though. for the German, but oh, Dorada landed on his feet. Oh, but now Komatsu rolls through. He has him in an arm. Uh, oh, I thought he was going to go for an armbar, but no, he goes for a pin. Two count. Oh, wow. But that was such a unique pinning combination there by Komatsu. I got to give him all the credit in the world for that innovation. Somebody's now, been watching that. Lucha Underground. That almost looked like a modified dragon tail. Absolutely. And now the slaps by Komatsu. Wow. You have Stag not earned that yet, young boy. And there's your super kick to deal with it. Oh, absolutely. Dorada, Dorada shutting gonna go for down. a senton here, maybe? Perhaps a senton. He's got himself perched on the top yep. rope. Senton. There it is. That could be it right there. But look at that. Nagata and Kojima are going to make sure that it's not. And now Elgin and Goto going to clear the field here. Man, say what you want about Nagata and Kojima. That was about the briskest walk I've ever seen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they both just kind of trot into the ring like, well, looks like we got to take care of business, boys. And there uh, it is, Samoan driver. That's going to be it. Samoan driver. Two. End of the three match. Three count. Yeah. You got to wonder if when these guys are in the back and they're looking at the match listings, if they ever grown because they know they're paired with the young boy on their team. And then the yeah. other team. Yeah, file. yeah. Like Kojima and, and Nagata just being like, man, we don't need this <laughs> shit. <laughs> And then uh, Kamatsu is just like, are you excited tonight, guys? Yeah. D did you finish cooking my dinner yet? Oh. Oh, yeah. It'll be almost done. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe while, the, maybe while you wait for that water to boil, you should go clean up the bathroom with a toothbrush. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. <laughs> 
the they're guys... just like, well, guys, looks like we got the young boy, so uh, congratulations on the win. I think we're going to take it easy. I don't think we're going to actually try in this match. Let's just chill. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, they, they gave it a good effort, but there is your team, Mascara Dorada, Goto, and, uh, you know, standing tall here in the ring. Michael Elgin. Michael Elgin, yes, he he was busy taking his straps off. And I'm uh, kind of yeah. surprised they didn't give the pinfall to Goto over Komatsu. I'm kind of surprised too, but then again, Dorada has been so impressive in this tournament. You know, I think it's. Uh, the, I believe, if I remember correctly, Dorada's championship is the CMLL Welterweight Championship. Yes, that's what you told me last time when you reported on it. So that's correct. Yeah. He's held that for so long, too. Now, these guys head into the back here, knowing that they did good work. They are triumphant here at day 11. Absolutely. And our next match is, is another situation where both teams now are going to have, uh, are gonna have a, a young boy. Tomaki Hanma teaming up with Jay White to take on Bullet Club, represented by Carl Anderson and Cody Hall. Yeah, you know, I have to give it to Bullet Club here. And it's not even just because of the young boy. But, I mean, you're dealing with Carl Anderson, who, yeah, say what you will. He lost yesterday, but he lost to the world champion, one of the most capable people on New Japan's roster. And Hanma just hasn't been able to get out of the blocks here of this tournament. Hell, you know what, though, John? Here's the thing. Hanma has gotten some pinfall victories in these tag team matches. He just can't whip by himself. Hanma can't win when it counts. That is the G1 Climax story of Tomowaki Hanma. And the story of the machine gun Carl Anderson. He wins some, he loses some, but I don't think he's ever really the underdog with how dangerous he and that gun stun can be. And you want to talk about a guy really coming into his own. I mean, Cody Hall has been so impressive as of late. And yes. I'll tell you, that yes. tandem, you, you look at the cerebral nature of Carl Anderson. He's a leader. He's a ring general. He'll go in there. He'll take charge. He'll formulate a game plan. And, and, there, and there it is, Cody Hall ducking in the line of fire. I love that. That was cool. I like that Cody Hall played into it like that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm guessing Bullet Club is not one to believe in friendly fire. And that's it's good. Weird because I gonna... feel like Cody Hall has been teaming up with Takahashi for pretty much this whole tournament. Right. But now tonight, teaming up with uh, someone that I would say is quite a bit more competent and maybe higher on the food chain in the Bullet Club than Takahashi, that being Machine Gun Carl Anderson. But now out comes Hanma. And Hanma, I mean, I don't know if it was televised, but the last singles match that he won was last year, 2014. Wow. Yeah. It was... uh. I think it was in April or May or something like that last year. So it's been over a year since Hanma's won a singles match. And I don't even know if the one that he won last year was even televised. So I'm not sure. I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, but I couldn't help but notice that Jay White actually cut in front of Hanma, making entrances so he could get in the ring. And uh, That was you know, so maybe... that he could get his entrance out of the way and people would remember Hanma's. Yeah, I suppose you're right, but I... You know, I just can't help but think Hanma's just had such a difficult time lately that I, I don't know what his perception may be in the back. I mean, I think a lot of people appreciate Hanma's work ethic. They know how hard he works, how much he probably loves doing this, but he just has not gotten any points on the board. Well, and again, he went 0-10 last year, so I wouldn't be super surprised if he did the same thing this year because that's just kind of how uh, that's just kind of how New Japan books him is he just never wins. But uh, you almost kind of feel like what would happen if he would win? Would the crowd still be as behind him as they are? And see, maybe that – and see, that's so interesting. I wonder – I don't want to say that it's a cultural thing because I, I think that's hyperbole and just completely misses the mark. But I find it interesting that Hanma is just like this lovable loser of sorts, right? But yet I Hanma could Hanma is easily... like Mikey Whipwreck fully realized. Exactly, because I could see New Japan at any given moment – putting a title on this guy and the crowd just exploding. Yeah. As you see there, he slams Carl Anderson down. Oh, Already calling for the, the Oh, but he missed. Yeah. 
And in a way, when he misses those headbutts, he's got to be doing Carl Anderson's job for him because it can't feel good, and it's got to soften up that uh, head and neck for the gun stun. No way. Is Carl Anderson really going to do this here? And oh, no, he went for a senton. senton. Still impressive, though. Still impressive. Uh, yeah, Hanma moved out of the way, and I can just picture Hanma screaming in his head, Ha! Now you know what it's like to be me! And now the Yeah, except there. Carl Anderson landed on his back, which... I mean, everybody lands on their back in wrestling, whereas Hanma, when he does that, he lands on his face. Yeah. And like, now Jay, would you rather in. be given a, a self-applied spine buster or a self-applied face buster? Yeah, definitely spine buster. Yeah, exactly. Carl Anderson, they're reversing the average up in the corner. Jay White oh, vaults but, over but, nice. Oh, but Carl Anderson's not taking any of Jay White's shit today. Oh, but a nice drop kick there from Jay White. Beautiful form by Jay White on that drop kick. Now look at that measuring car. Are very, very technically sound. And now look at that. I love that by the Bullet Club. Cody Hall with a knee in the back of Jay White. Carl Anderson knows he has a little bit of time while Jay White's wincing in pain. Takes care of Hanma. And now they divide up the ring. And now they've cleared it all together. And Cody this Hall is... is isolating Hanma on the outside so that Carl Anderson can do his work with Jay White. This is the Bullet Club at their finest, folks. It is. And I love, too, like, you could even see Carl Anderson told Cody Hall to go get Hanma. He's the ringleader right now. And that's one thing that Takahashi doesn't typically do. As, and that's why I said, Ashley, when they were making their entrances, like, I, I think that's going to make this team so dangerous. Because to me, I always looked at Carl Anderson even long before, like, you know, I, w I was watching, you know, the matches and everything else, when I would just see them all in the ring together, being the Bullet Club, I always viewed Carl Anderson as kind of that second in command. And he's just got that presence of, okay, kid, I'm going to smarten you up. You're going to listen to me and we're going to win. And, I mean, that's what makes this team so dangerous. You see their nice knee by Cody all to Jay White and then the back elbow there. It's one of those things where, to me, like, if AJ Styles is, like, the star player of the Bullet Club, Carl Anderson's, like, the head coach. Exactly. Except he also mixes it up on the field. And now, oh, look at that. They're hard Irish whip. And again, Hanma gets taken out. And I love yeah. this cutting the ring in half. Just drove Jay ball. White's face into that turnbuckle pad, man. <sighs> That'll correct your facial features or rearrange them, I should say, real quick. Yeah, and don't now, tell John Cena about rearranging facial features. <laughs> yeah, certainly not. As you see now, Cody Hall here. It's going to be backbreaker. Oh, and those innovative. Fall and then the fall away slam. slam. I'll tell you something, Ash. If Cody Hall can ever really put it all together with that raw power of his, that young man could be a force in the coming years. I mean, I, I feel like Cody Hall went to do a big boot on Hama, but he mostly missed, and Hama barely even sold it, which I love. <laughs> and now he's going to. Oh, and Anderson and... with a nice. Oh, I thought he was going to do a senton there, but... I thought he was even going to do a stomp or something, but, like... Yeah, well, like... well, it was, like, in my brain as he was floating over. I was like, oh, my God, he's going to do a senton, but then I saw that his feet went over the ropes before his head, and I was like, oh, my God, he's going to do a stomp, and then he just landed. And I was like, oh, well, now I'm disappointed. <laughs> and now you see here Jay White regaining the vertical base, trying to fight out here. Oh, but Anderson Carlson. with the European... Beautiful European oh, uppercut there. Oh, Jay White there. reverses. Oh, nice DDT. And what a DDT there by Jay White. Yes. Can he get to his corner here and make the tag to Hanma? I certainly hope so. Oh, he kips up, and there's the tag. Wow, and here comes Hanma. And I'm guessing him and Carl Anderson are going to have a matchup tomorrow, Ashton? Yes, Or no, they not are. tomorrow. Yes, Friday, will, right? No, not tomorrow. Yeah, 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 exactly. Friday. And, yeah, that should be an interesting matchup. I mean, a, a big disparity. Oh, and there it is, the Kakeshi. He got it. And Carl Anderson favoring that arm. And oh, he got a blockbuster. One. Yeah, that seated blockbuster there. Cover. And Carl Anderson kicks out at two. But you saw like Anderson. Somebody else does that. Who else does that, that seated block? Is that Yoshihashi that does that? I think it is Yoshihashi, yes. And look at Cody Hall coming in. He sends trouble. And Hanma oh, there actually that threat. But Hanma takes him out. And now turn around, Hanma. Carl Anderson's behind you. He's going to hit you with a gun stun. No, an AA spine buster. Oh, so beautiful. Hooks the leg deep, and Hanma kicks out. That was close, though. Absolutely. That That's Carl Anderson. I mean, every movie does. I mean, to, to steal a line from the Bullet Club, just too, too sweet. sweet. 
Ooh, He's so sorry. good. Had to. <laughs> You're talking about a man that in any given moment I could buy Carl Anderson as a world champion. Oh, Hanma oh ropes. A, a, God, son! Oh, he went for it, but Hanma caught him. Hanma caught him, and he punched him right in the head for it. Oh, but Anderson with a pump kick. Beautiful pump kick there by Anderson. Now, oh, oh but the Kakeshi. Torpedo Kakeshi. Oh, man. Can Hanma make the tag here to Jay White? I feel like that should become just the nor the new like normal move in his arsenal because he never misses the torpedo one. Yeah, I could actually buy that. Yeah, as his finisher, like who who the hell when your head is as hard as that and it's coming at you like a heat seeking missile? Oh, kick Anderson, out of that. Jay White leaps over though. Oh, nice back elbow there by Jay White. Yeah, a little bit of a spin there, and Jay White now trying to pump the crowd up, and he, he's Cody he's Hall getting back on the apron though. That could mean bad things for Jay White. Could potentially, what an uppercut there by Jay White. And Carl Anderson just kind of rolls away from the corner. Jay White maybe going for a double stomp, maybe a cross body. Drop cross kick, body, maybe. Drop kick. Yeah, there it is. Hooks the leg here. One, One two. two. Oh, but Carl Hanma. Anderson kicks out. Hanma goes across the ring, though. Takes out Cody Hall. Oh, no, look at this. He says, come on, let's team up on this guy. They know how dangerous Carl Anderson is. This is certainly a smart tactic here. Hanma shot into him and back elbow, and then comes Jay White with the back elbow of his own. Actually, that was almost like a European uppercut. Hanma, scoop slam. He wants the top rope. Kakeshi. And if Jay White gives him coverage, he may actually get it off here. I don't know, though. Hanma's taking a lot of time, and there's Cody Hall already back up on his feet. And Jay White Come on, Hanma. Attention. And uh, yeah, Carl Anderson moves out of the way. And now Cody, Cody Hall picks his spot. After Jay White. Cody Hall going to be able to take some advantage of this situation here. They get rid of Hanma, and they got a double team on Jay White. This could be the end of the match right here, John. It could be. Cody Hall so smart in picking his spot. What a, a clothesline. Close and a pump and a, kick. Oh, man. And Cody Hall oh, feeling here. For the end. What a uh, variant from Cody Hall. That's going to do Hall it there. Legal? I don't think Cody Hall's no, even a man. No, he's not. Oh, uh, there's there, the Carl senton. Anderson with a senton. One, two. two. Oh, but Ahanma breaks it up. I didn't see that coming. Oh, yeah, but look at Cody Hall here playing defense once again, and it could be time for the gun stun. He's calling for it. He's calling for an STO, actually. Oh, man, the TKO. The TKO. Oh, gun stun. TKO, yeah. There oh, it there it is. He got it. That's it's over. It. It's yeah. over. One, One two. two. Oh! oh! Jay White kicked out. Are you kidding me? I can't wow. believe this match is still going. That's crazy. Oh, now yeah, he's but... doing the Randy Orton poses. He's calling for the gun stun for sure. Oh, man. 99, Jay White. No! Jay White with a backslide. One. No way. Two. No way. Oh, no way. my God. Oh. Oh, so close. Oh, wow. And there's the chop there. The car. Are you kidding me right now? Jay White wants this so bad, man. He wants to get that first win under his belt in G1 so far. I can't believe he's doing this to Carl Anderson, of all people. The same man that beat Shinsuke Nakamura and Goto. And now, oh, there, right, it there it is. is. Gun. There's and the gun. Now it's over. One, One two, two, three. three camp. But Ooh, Ashton, what a match, though. Jay got, White showing some feistiness. We got to, yeah, we got to give credit to Jay White there. Showed up. Yeah, and with, Hanma was basically out of it that whole time. Jay White did all that on his own. Absolutely. Carl Anderson, whether he wants to admit it or not, a young boy gave him just a little bit, a little bit of a run for his money. And Friday, it's going to be Hanma versus Anderson, the Kakeshi versus the Gunstun. Oh, he's going to go for a torpedo Kakeshi, and Anderson's going to catch him in a Gunstun, isn't he? That would be the most incredible counter. Or better yet, Hanma goes for the top rope Kakeshi and Anderson catches him in the gun stun. He's basically sticking his head right out there for Anderson to grab it by. Absolutely. Well, I mean, let's not forget in Anderson's matchup with uh, with Goto, Goto wanted to put him away with the Shoten Kai and Carl Anderson caught him with the gun stun. I mean, it's just a move that can come out of nowhere. So if Hanma is thinking about a Kakeshi, he may have to think twice. Hanma may have to adapt on Friday because when you get hit with that gun stun, there's a reason why men like Ishii and um, I'm presuming Okada in their match had it so well scouted. You know, John, and that's because so funny because I, um, I love like AJ Styles and all those guys. 
I'm right. pretty sure if I had to make like a, a New Japan Fave Five, the only Gaijin that would be on my list is Carl Anderson, and he would be like three or four on that list. I can tell you that as much as I love AJ Styles, Carl Anderson is my favorite Bullet Club stablemate. Yeah. I love watching this man work. Because like if I had to come up with like a New Japan Fave Five, number one would be Nakamura just by default. Two would probably be Shibata. I think three would be Okada. Four would be Carl Anderson, and then five would be Naito. I I still just smile, just the stupidest smile hearing Naito in your V5 because he's made such a turnaround with us. Yeah. And Bullet Club rolls on, and good God, this team. Well, I guess both teams, but particularly the opposition to the Bullet Club because I believe it was a Yujiro Takahashi and Tama Tonga but they're facing Shinsuke Nakamura and Ishii. Good God. Hey, yeah, and the, you ha- you really have to wonder why that is. Um, I'm guessing. I'm because... looking right now. Nakamura is facing Takahashi. Where is Okada, and why is he not in this match? It looks like Okada is in the next match, so he's not injured. But why would he not be in Tamatanga's place? No, that wouldn't make sense either. So wait. Oh, I see what it is. Because it's a chaos thing. Because they weren't going to have Nakamura and Okada versus... Or no, wait. Oh, because Okada and Ishii are facing each other. Oh, Okada and Ishii are facing each other. Holy crap. That match is finally happening. But yeah, those guys are facing each other on Friday. And uh, they're in the same stable. So they can't team up against each other. They have to team up together. But then they can't team up together because there are too many people right now. Or not enough people to oppose them right now. I'll tell you something, Ashton. Like we said, Okada, Ishii, and Shibata all sharing, you know, the same record of four and one right now. It is a very privileged class. And the idea that Ishii and Okada are going to go at it, I could see Ishii beating the world champion. You know, a Goto's dog. Oh, yeah. I think we've said that before, too. Ishii, I, I will not consider Ishii the underdog, no matter who it's against. Even Tanahashi, like, I'm still. I'm still picking Ishii to win that match. I mean, and considering that Nakamura and Ishii beat the hell out of each other, yeah. and now they get to team up and beat the hell out of someone else, Yeah. I, I fear for the lives of the Bullet Club tonight, yeah. particularly Yujiro Takahashi and Tama Tonga, because, boys, it is going to be a long night. Well, and at their uh, at their last show at uh, the the episode 10, the one that we couldn't do, uh, Nakamura, we already said that he beat Goto and Ishii beat Nagata. So both of these guys won since their last match against each other. And now, I mean, so far, they are both three and two. Or no, Nakamura's three and two. Ishii's four and one. Uh, so as you said, Ishii and Okada, the only people in B block at four and one. So this, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, I don't care if you don't even, like, you don't even need to look at the fact that, oh, Tama Tonga's on the other team, obviously he's eating the pin. It could be any two people on that team, and I would still be picking Ishii and Nakamura to win. They're beasts. Uh, I will make an admission to this viewing audience. Uh, This tournament has been such a pleasure for me. I mean, not just the comedy, I mean, all that's obvious. What I mean by that is, I was fully anticipating when this tournament started that Tanahashi and AJ Styles were just going to dominate the block. I didn't know who was going to dominate the other block, probably Okada, which has really been true for the most part, but I thought those guys were going to have a monopoly on it. To see the competitiveness in this tournament, particularly from the likes of Ishii, who I think you and I really both respected after Wrestle Kingdom 9. I did not expect him, though, to do that well, uh, you know, or to do this well, I should say, in this tournament at 4-1. and Yeah. I mean, I honestly, here's the thing. I would be elated if Ishii won this tournament oh because my gosh, yes. he he is such an incredible performer. And just the idea that he's been so dominant, I think, puts the biggest smile on my face simply because I wasn't expecting him to get that kind of treatment considering who all is in this tournament in the first place. Well, so and I the just crazy thing is he's got the potential on Friday to go five and one. Yeah, dude, it's it's so crazy, dude, because if he beats Okada and it would come down to a tie between those guys, you know that it would go to Ishii. As we've talked about, guys, that's the whole system. If there is a tie in the block between two individuals, whoever won, 
you know, the match between those two individuals, they become the winner of that block. So a very important matchup. Exactly. You know, and very speaking of heads, matchup, I wonder if Tom Matonga is going to attempt to use the head shrinker in this match. He he may. I mean, Tama Tonga has been on a roll lately in these tag matches. And now look at that back elbow there to Ishii. But Ishii just eats it, goes for a form, and then a blatant eye rake. And that, that's what you need to stop Ishii. And there's the shoulder block. But I want to point out that Ishii is such a freak of a human being that Tama Tonga actually had to impair his vision just to get a slight edge in this match. Are you kidding me? And even now, even after he did that, Ishii, well, he was at, at that point when I was getting ready to say it, um, still challenging Tamaha Tonga to basically hit him harder. I'm telling you, if Ishii came to my house and he just told me that this house belongs to him now, I wouldn't even ask the follow-up question of why. I would just be like, okay. And then i tell my family, we're moving, guys. We're moving. Because I'm, I just, you don't say no to that man. You don't say anything to that man, actually. You just walk on by. Yeah, because like if you say something, there's a distinct possibility that he could take it the wrong way and get offended. And it's not even it's not even the wrong way because if Tomohiro Ishii takes it that way, it's the right way. Exactly. Because who are you to challenge the way that Tomohiro Ishii takes something? Exactly. I, I mean, this man, if I just had a hard day's work, you know, my livelihood to try and live, and he was waiting outside the doors of my job and said, give me your paycheck. I mean, would you try and resist? I would no, be you like, wouldn't. well, I mean, I, I, I did work hard for you, Mr. Ishii, so here you go. <laughs> That's just it, though. And then let's not scoff at who's in the ring now. I mean, Takahashi has been impressive. I mean, yes, he hit a bump in the road with Elgin. But I mean, Takahashi. And this is actually so the match right now that we're seeing in the ring. Takahashi Nakamura is going to happen on Friday. Two very interesting characters going to collide on Friday. But I was getting ready to say Nakamura. We have to call him just as dangerous because he beat Ishii for God's sakes. You know, he got the win. And uh, Nakamura, one of the most talented men in New Japan, bar none. We've talked about the limb advantage. We've talked about his reach, just his pure ability. This guy's a four-time Intercontinental Champion, three-time World Champion. He's won the G1 Climax before. I think so that's twice, hasn't give... he? I, I only read once in my research. and that. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Okada. Time. Okada's won it twice. So, yeah, I mean, you're talking there are men in this tournament that know what it's like Foot to win shiver it. on the neck. Oh, man. Oh, but look that. at Tagashi there. Caught the leg of the... Oh, the elbow straight in the knee there. That's one of Nakamura's favorite weapons, so obviously Takahashi wants to take it out. Absolutely, and there's the biting of the thumb. And now uh, Ishii there gets taken out by Tama Tonga. That's such a weird that. sentence to think about. Some, uh, Ishii gets taken out by anybody, but then Tama Tonga. But look at that, Ashton. So smart by Takahashi. First the elbow to the injured elbow of Nakamura, and then he follows it up with that drop kick. And now he traps the injured elbow in the guardrail. Brilliant. Absolutely. He's working it over, brother. He's working it over. This is why I say you can't sleep on Takahashi even when he's in there with the likes of Nakamura because this guy, he's so shrewd, so malicious when he finds an opening. It's crazy how close and even this G1 is, too, because last year there were three different guys that won all but one match. And now, I mean, after Friday, we're only going to have – one or two guys left with one loss on their records. Right, absolutely. And now the, just that injured elbow on Nakamura driven into the ring post. Nakamura trying to recover. You know Takashi isn't going to give him that kind of reprieve. Absolutely not. And I'll tell you what, after Takahashi's victory over Nagata, where he worked over the ribs, it opened my eyes and it really made me said, wow, if Takahashi could just be that consistent in all of his matches in terms of, you know, formulating a game plan and sticking to it. He could beat anybody in this tournament. And the way he's taking it to Nakamura right now, you know, I, I wouldn't consider it a foregone conclusion on Friday that Nakamura is winning. And now Tama Tonga there, continuing the work that Takahashi started. Takahashi's one of those odd cases where it seems like he has all the pieces. He just needs to put them together. And uh, it seems like he put him all together against Nagata, but he needs to figure out a way to do that consistently now. I, I couldn't have said it better, Ashton. I, I really couldn't have. I mean, you know, I've talked about before 
how I think some people may at first be deceived by Takahashi. You see him come out with the beautiful women, you know, the shades, the swagger, and they think, oh, I get it. This guy is just kind of the hype of the Bullet Club or whatever. But no, there there is a real ability there to Yujiro Takahashi that cannot well, be understated. I mean, not only that, but I would argue that the hype of the Bullet Club is is Carl Anderson because he's yeah. the one who does their promos for the most part. Absolutely. And now look at that. Takahashi's so proud of himself. And now look at that going for the arm bar here. Arm bar! But, but uh, Nakamura is so smart having the hands clasped. And now Ishii, Ishii comes in. yeah. Took you long enough, man. What are you waiting for? I'm well, sorry. Think... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to say yeah. anything. Because his response would have been, what you say to me? I, I, no, I, no, John. I... You, you're giving him far too much credit. His response would have been just a single glare, and I would have peed myself. <laughs> I am so sorry I gave you criticism. It will never happen again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Every Ishii match is a five-star match, mainly because if it's not, I die. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the crazy thing is, that's not even that far off. Every Ishii match is over, like, three and a half stars easily. Oh, I, I love the man's work. As you see Takahashi there with the boot to Nakamura, and Nakamura I've is been, another man. I've honestly, I've been thinking a lot about it, and I think my match of the year so far is actually Ishii Hanma. Wow, considering Nakamura Ibushi is still a thing. That's I know, out. yeah. It's crazy, but I went back and watched it a second time, and that match is just incredible. Almost oh, perfect, really. Oh, dear God, Ishii got the tag. Yes, he did, and then <laughs> comes Tamatanga to eat all the offense. Uh, oh, we got, we got out of the way. No, oh, and, oh, the miscue. Oh, the miscue. Oh, oh. Jesus. Oh, someone, he ate his someone Ishii's size should not be able to move as quickly as he does. I... I'm terrified of this man. I'm 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 literally terrified of this man. He just ate. I'm a more scared thing. of. To, I'm, I'm literally more scared of Ishii than I would be scared of a literal pit bull made out of stone. Exactly. And what a power slam there, Takashi. The cover. And Takashi kicks out. Of course he does. And you know what? This gives Nakamura time to recover. I mean, that elbow got worked over maliciously. Yeah. Now Nakamura, Nakamura needs a breather, brother. Absolutely, and that's gonna. To help the team in the long run. But look at that. T- oh, please, Takahashi. Please. He was actually going to try and suplex Ishii. Okay. I'm offended and, uh, for Ishii. <laughs> and, uh, oh, oh, but Takahashi there creates that opening. And now he's Ishi- going to go for the fisherman buster. And he, and he got gets it. it. Wow. And I think, you know what? Him driving the air out of Ishii, because even Ishii needs to breathe as much as it may scare us to admit it. And Tama Tonga gets no, the tag he, now. He does not need to breathe. He breathes. <laughs> He breathes through freaking respiration in his skin cells, man. <laughs> it's like Ishii doesn't need to breathe. That was just a myth. He's not a mammal. He's a freaking reptile. Oh, 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 nice leap there by Tamatanga. And then the Tamatanga with the slide through, and then the drop kick that actually takes Ishii off his feet. Tamatanga has one of the most underrated drop kicks ever. I'm telling you, Tamatanga, there are so many guys in the Bullet Club that have really gained my respect throughout this, and Tomatonga is certainly one of them. And then the back suplex, the cover, and Ishii kicks out. That was a really nice back suplex. He dropped Ishii flat on his back. I know, Tomatonga. Looks like Nakamura has recovered, though. Ishii might want to tag out and recover himself. Maybe. I mean, Nakamura doesn't look all there just yet, though. I agree with you that he's definitely recovered, or he's on the road to. <laughs> and I splashed up a Tomatonga. I just feel like, Ishii, you totally deserve a break, but only if you really want to take one. Exactly. And, oh, the collision there. I think Tomatonga got like a headbutt of sorts, it looked like. Well, I mean, Tom- it's one of those things where you can headbutt just about anything except for a stone freaking brick wall. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And now there's another boot there. Oh, and a there. big Ishii. Ishii's going to start killing people in a second here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was just getting ready to say, I wonder when he's just going to get up and be like... Oh my god, he just dropped Ishii on his head, it looked like. That... Fireman's carry flapjack looked really, really, really bad. Like I feel like Ishii. Like, I feel like Ishii's the opposite of Neville. He he gave up the uh, the the lack of gravity because it seems like gravity affects Ishii a little bit more. But he gave that up in response to just being a total badass and unkillable. Absolutely. And now the double now, suplex. Nice. Na- Nakamura takes out Takahashi. Ishii takes out Tamatonga. And now look at that Inziguri there to the back oh, of the head of Tomatonga. I love Nakamura so much. Oh, no, Nakamura with that. 
Inverted slam there and there it is. Inverted. Would, that, would you just call that like an inverted power slam, an inverted angle slam? I don't know. Oh, my God. What a lariat by Ishii. And yes, I would cover. And, oh, oh, my oh God. Oh, my I, God. I can't believe he kicked out of that. Tamatanga, what are you doing, man? It's called self-preservation. Learn it. <laughs> All the brain buster here. No, Tamatanga slips out. Wow. It kind of looked like a neckbreaker driver there. Inverted neckbreaker driver, too. And, oh, Ishii kicked out. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the confidence boost for Tamatanga if he was able to pin Ishii here? Oh, my God. It wouldn't have been valid. It wouldn't have actually happened. Uh, like, uh, for uh, end would have gotten close uh, to three, and then it would have just been like, no. That was a unique double team move. Oh, my God. The knee. There it is. Bomaye, baby. Oh, but now. Oh, there's the lariat, too. That's got to be it. One, oh, two. Come in. Oh, but Takahashi breaks it up. Nakamura was looking on the wrong side for him. Yeah, Nakamura. I mean, as much as I hate to insult him, it was playing bad defense there. And now could it be the brain buster, though? to be it. Oh, my God. There oh, it is. Yes, yeah, you're done. Right on his freaking dome. Ishii claims another one. And nobody is surprised. And I'll tell you something, folks. Say what you will. Oh, John and Ashton, you're just committing hyperbole. Oh, it's just your fandom for Ishii. And the fandom part... Yeah, that tell that to his face. Tell that to his face, first of all. And second of all, I would like to see Okada say the same after Friday. Because I'll tell you something. If there is any other man besides who we saw in Goto that can beat the IWGP heavyweight champion, it is the Stone Pitbull. Because this man, he came to win it. Because even Nakamura, the only man who was able to beat Ishii, I think it took three Boma Yays to get it done. Yeah, it did. And one of them was off the top for or middle rope. Yeah. I mean, you're talking three knees from Nakamura to take Ishii out. Are you kidding me? This Actually, man isn't here. It might have been four, the more I think about it. It might have been four. I mean, that's what it takes to beat Ishii. And you know what? Ishii, you know what, dude? Ishii might kick out of a Rainmaker. I was just, thank you. Thank you. Because you know what? I wanted somebody other than me to say it. And I was getting ready to say it. I said, we know that Tanahashi kicked out of it. Ishii might be the second man to ever kick out of a Rainmaker because I that think, man. I think it's a possibility, man. He is so tough. And the, the thing is, too, is that like they're chaos stablemates, too. So they could play it off as like. Okada didn't want to completely take Ishii's head off, and it gave Ishii the room to kick out of it. Right. I mean, they don't, they, they, I mean, it's not like Ishii needs to, Okada to take it easy on him for him to kick out of a Rainmaker. Right, absolutely. And I believe... Kushida! It, yes, Kushida. Now the we know idea. which team's winning right away because Kushida exists, and I don't think he's existed in a match so far without getting the winning pinfall. Yes, that's very true. The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion... Been AKA so impressive. Super duper OP. Absolutely. I can't Which wait is for his match with Ricochet. That's going to be amazing. Oh, that is going to be absolute. Speaking insane. of Ricochet, I can't wait for Ultima Lucha tonight either. Oh my God. Patron Mundo is the opener. I, my body and isn't Uma even Muertes ready. Uma Muertes is the closer, home slice. I know. Dude, my, my body isn't even ready right now. And we're not even done what's really been a strong day, day 11 of G1 Climax. Well, I mean, you say that, but we haven't even gotten to the G1 matches yet. We haven't gotten to the tournament matches, the matches that really matter. I know. Uh, That's just a, a good example of how enjoyable these tag team matches can be. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I wasn't really getting into the first one that much, but the last one and the, the Carl Anderson one were both great, and I'm expecting this one to be at least somewhat enjoyable. Wait a minute, is this a team composed entirely of juniors? I think so. Yeah, because it's Kushida, Captain New Japan, and Taguchi. Huh. It's like, it's like, oh my god, Kushida! And then you see Taguchi, and he's like, oh, and, and he's there too. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like when that really cool person at your school like actually comes to your party and you feel like your party's been validated, but they bring their uncool sibling and you're just like, well, this is my cross to bear. <laughs> I didn't even invite him. <laughs> what is he doing here? I invited you. What are you doing with him here? I know, right? <laughs> that's the kind of, uh, yeah, that's the kind of situation that you'd expect. That's just, just has to happen. Okada! 
okay, maybe we know who the winning team's going to be now because you've got three juniors going against a team that consists of at least one G1 competitor. Unless Ghetto's also part of this team, then he could tap out to the Kimura by Kushida. Yeah, yeah, that is true. And you know he's going to be. It's going to probably be Ghetto and, oh, yeah, right there, Yoshihashi. Yoshihashi, another man who's been so impressive. And, Yo- <sighs> yeah. and Yoshihashi. Ghetto is, is definitely taken. It's either going to be Ghetto or uh, Captain New Japan getting pinned. Yeah, definitely. And Yoshihashi, he is a junior, correct? Yeah. So he could be a contender one day for Kushida's IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. That's a matchup I'd love to see. Not actually going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I find Yoshihashi to be that impressive. I think that would be one hell of a match, is my point. Uh, he's been quite you. impressive in these tag matches. I, I see yeah. where you're going. The great I see thing eye is, to eye, brother. The great thing is, none of these people are Ishii, so I feel comfortable trash talking at least 95% of them. Yeah. Particularly to Gucci. We can trash talk all of them except for Okada. Yeah, Okada. I, I wouldn't even because I respect Okada. So, exactly. you know, there you go. Yeah, Okada deserves better. Exactly. He deserves to be in a match where everybody is untouchable and can't be made fun of. But he's in a match where it's pretty much just him. You know, it's so funny, Ashton, because I look at Okada, and I've said this so many times, and there are only so many variations that you can say the same thing. But I look at Okada, and I find it so funny that the whole premise of the Bullet Club, and we've talked about this, it's hatred for a group because they're imposing Western values, they're bringing Western wrestling culture, and and they're bringing it to New Japan, which is very steeped you know, in, in their ways and their traditions, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I love seeing the Japanese approach to wrestling. I, I love, though, too, the, the fans that are like, oh, get rid of all these Western shenanigans. And let me see Taguchi hit people with his ass. Exactly. I was uh, I was gonna say bringing it back to Okada that I just feel like Okada personifies like everything that's so good about the way we do things with pro wrestling. You know, the charisma, the look, everything. Like I feel like if anybody can make a seamless transition from one culture to the next, it would Not be before. Okada. And Nakamura. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But I think Nakamura and Okada. Okada definitely has to be on my list. He's just so good. You don't think Tanahashi would make a seamless transition? Um. Because I do. You know what? I could see that. I could see that. And I'll, I'll look at that Okada. Just wanted to get this match out of the way. Just took Captain New Japan's head off with that boot. I, I just kind of feel like pure talent kind of transcends culture. I would agree with that. I think it's a fair point to make. And, and Okada, Nakamura, and Tanahashi are the top three guys in New Japan for a reason. Certainly true. And I'll tell you what, I mean, Captain New Japan just got all of Okada's pure talent right in his face with that boot. Hasn't been the same since. <laughs> break out of the side headlock here. There's a shoulder block there by Okada. And now look at that vault. Oh, so for Captain New Japan. Captain New Japan there with the leapfrog. And then, oh, tells Okada, say, why do people adhere to that? Why do people, you know what, I'd be like, no, keep charging through. And then, oh, look at that, misses the diving form. Oklahoma roll there by Okada, two. And, oh, Captain New Japan kicks out. And now Okada just kind of looking down at Captain New Japan like, yeah, that's right. Oh, is he going to tag in Kushida? I want to see Kushida versus Okada. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. And now Okada's oh, saying, Okada no. Okada tags in Yoshihashi. Man. You know, Okada seemed to be kind of, or not Okada, but uh, Kushida was kind of, you know, pulling uh, Captain the New Japan back. That should technically count as a tag, but instead yeah. we're going to go to Gucci. But instead, yeah, we get, yeah, yeah. And he's just, he's getting that rear ready. You know what I really want to see? What is that? Taguchi one-on-one with Ishii. I think we all know why you want to see that match. Yeah. And now Taguchi there with the kick to the gut goes right to the side. Headlock. Maybe in like a last man standing match. <gasps> oh, man. And then a oh, nice shoulder block there by Taguchi. He's going to vault over Yoshihashi here. Hashi there with the leapfrog, though. Nice. Ducks over. Not... I'll tell you, Hashi's been so impressive. And that law had the rear scouted. And then, oh, but he gets caught in the arm drag. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't like delivering these lines either, people. <laughs> I'm just like sitting back and like, wow, this really just does sound like the worst thing. <laughs> I know. And, and there it is. 
twice. <laughs> Three times. Unbelievable. Will you please come up with something new to Gucci? You're not over. Okay, maybe a little. But still, you shouldn't be over. And there's Yoshihashi sends to Gucci oh, ducks over and chokes him. Nice. What was that? Yeah, nice offense there by Hashi, what I was saying. He had uh, Taguchi well scouted there again. Yeah. I don't know. I guess being juniors, maybe they're quite familiar with each other. I don't know. Maybe. I still want to see that Ishii match, though. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Maybe a steel cage. Isn't it funny that we would probably just sick all of our problems, you know, with Ishii, just sick him on all of our problems? Like, <laughs> if I was in debt or something, I would send him to the credit card company. And then, like, I'd be like, oh, so do I still have debt? No, 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 it's fine, you're fine. I'd be like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. If you're a credit card company and Ishii comes in rocking a suit and some sunglasses <laughs> and he's just like, hey, man, this guy doesn't want to be in debt anymore. Are you going to be the <laughs> one to tell him no? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Because then, immediately after Ishii poses that to me, I look at that stereotypical picture of my family that I have on my desk, and then I say, no, no, sir, I'm not going to be the one to do that. So, <laughs> did that cleared. <laughs> and See, then when my we could literally just fix all of the world's problems if we just use Ishii as the weapon of... Uh, not even mass destruction, just the weapon of mass threatening. <laughs> I am, I right now want to start a petition to send Ishii to Washington. As you see now, Ajin and team, team Chaos just working so well here, as is to be expected. Now Ghetto gets the tag. Forget Washington. Let's think of a more global approach. Let's send Ishii to North Korea, man. Absolutely. And I look at Ghetto just stepping on the face of Taguchi. Put an end to all that crap. <laughs> Kim, Kim jong Hu. Yeah, exactly. And then Ishii would take the power for himself. And again, I pose the question, are you going to tell him no? Ishii would eat Kim Jong-un's face off. <laughs> He'd pull him a ton. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but you're right. And then, and then he would look at you, and then in Japanese he would say, it was me, Ashton. It was, it was me, me all, all along. <laughs> And you know what the crazy thing is? I would readily believe it. Yeah. No yeah. question. Ishii, Ishii or Makabe. Ishii or Makabe could be Matanza, and I'd totally buy it. Oh, and now Okada, I think he's going to do a, a Tope Atomico here. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely gorgeous. The athleticism from Okada is second to none in New Japan. And Absolutely. I don't think Ishii would mind me saying that because he doesn't really try and do anything super athletic. He just beats people up. Well, no, yeah, see, he's not really so much an athlete so much as he is a mauler and, and, a, and a house in human form. And a killer <laughs> and a murderer and a, an ass kicker. And... and and see, when you say killer and a murderer, he then looks at you and he says, are, are, are you making accusations to which you flee the country? And <laughs> <laughs> With this running down my leg. It's like, I feel incredibly warm right now. I think the temperature just bumped up a few degrees. No, that's something running down my pant leg. I'm going to go change now. And now yeah. uh, she there just tags in ghetto. <laughs> we need to make a commentary one day of just how many times, how many ways we could say that Ishii is just the most threatening human being on the face of this earth. Like, after seeing Ishii, I'll put it to you this way. I become offended when I see Chuck Norris memes. Because I just want to say, bitch, please. You, you yeah. don't even know. And now look at this here, Ghetto just choking out Taguchi blatantly in the corner. But the referee distracted by Captain New Japan. Way to help your partner there, Captain New Japan. I guess he's lived long enough to see himself become the villain in this scenario. And now uh, Ghetto, I don't know if he's going to stay on Taguchi or if he's going to tag in Okada. He's kind of looking around. I think he's trying to decide what to do. Yeah, and I think he yeah. is going to stay on Taguchi. The hesitation is an issue. Absolutely. And now he's going to Irish. You know who doesn't hesitate, John? Oh my god, who doesn't hesitate at Ishii? He really doesn't. He really doesn't. He does the opposite of hesitation. Like, when most people would flinch, he just says, screw you, and then punches you in the face. Absolutely, and Taguchi there, he did get the rear view, and now can he tag in? And he does, he tags Rashida! in. And now finally someone interesting, there's the chop, the springboard chop. The double kick. And then there are the double kicks. The double donkey kick. Oh, wow. And then the measure kicks, I think, right to the Armageddon. There are three, softening it up for that Kimura. Very smart by Kushida. Yeah, because he knows that he's going to end up getting that submission win today. Absolutely. Oh, and uh, a oh, drop kick. 
Yeah, shades of his partner, Alex Shelley, there. And then the cart went and then the drop kick to the head. Nice. Moonsault. Nice by Kushida. Taking, taking a page out of Ibushi's playbook. And then a double. Really? Really? Wow. I feel like Kushida is like the opposite of Ishii because he looks so unthreatening and he gets booked so insanely strong. I know, right? And I'll get that bag breaker there to get him. And now he's going to signal for something here. Maybe another moonsault this time on the top rope. And he got it Jesus. there. But Okada's going to pick it up. And there it, and there is. it is. Oh, but Captain Okada. New Japan going right after Okada. Jeez. I didn't yeah, expect him to be that aggressive with Okada. That was weird. Oh, man. Could it be Kimura time? Or no, I think it may be some Super kind kick. of kick. And Kushida, oh. oh, went for that buzzsaw kick of sorts. And oh, get out there with a kick to the gut. And then, oh, look at that, that blockbuster there by Hashi. And now, look, Okada gets tagged in. This could be a prime oh, opportunity for As long as Okada is the legal man, I have no fear for him getting pinned or submitted. Because yeah, nobody on the other team could possibly beat him. Ever. Absolutely. I completely agree, but Captain New Japan's going to give it a try anyway. Oh, man, Captain New Japan. He, he walks so slowly towards Okada. I'm like, you know you're in there with the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, right? Yeah, and yeah, he even it. raised his fist on the way. Like, yeah, I'm good, guys. <laughs> and Taguchi, and I'm actually offended that Taguchi was able to put his rear in Okada's face. Yeah, Okada is so above that. <laughs> I know. And now Kushida's saying it's time, and there's that. But, and why are you triple teaming your chip? This is so wrong. Everything about this is wrong. And they actually had to go in and break up the count. That's wow. messed up, man. That's messed up. They're, that's there is, like they're trying to turn Okada into New Japan Ric Flair. I know, right? Oh, and now Captain New Japan signaling for something here. He's gesturing wildly. Okada getting up to his feet. New Japan can feel it here. And, he, and he's got him. I don't know if it was. I think that's kind of like a claw hole. Yeah, like a mandible claw. Yeah. Okada fading here, down to one knee. But Ghetto with the super. And Ghetto, there, look at that. And now Kushida vaults over the ropes. Oh, but Hashi there. Whoa, oh, what a my close. God. Oh, and oh, then Ask threw off there. Gucci. Really? He took both of them out. Oh, now he's gonna do the same to Okada, and there, there it is. Oh my God. Oh, I know. <laughs> Where's Ishii when you need him, man? Uh, yeah. You know what? I think that should be our role. Did now. he we're, seriously we're... just twerk? I think, and there's the flapjack by Okada, thank God. And now he, and Captain New Japan ducks the clothesline, though, and then, oh, throat thrust there. And thank then, oh, you, the Okada! Drop. Now get the, oh, wait, no, he's going to go for that elbow drop first. Kushida being restrained. Oh, what a beautiful wow. elbow drop. Such and now Okada, he's feeling it. He just no. called for it here. Rainmaker. Let's put this one away here. Let's yeah, put this do. one in the books. And, and there, there it is. is. And now go for the pin. And Kushida's being restrained. And it's over. And that's what happens. Oh, my goodness. That match was really frustrating. I know. I, I think struggle our... so much to get into any match involving Taguchi. I think our new rule of thumb will be, because you know, guys, that we are committed to play-by-play, -play, but we're only going to talk about Ishii outside of matches that he has when Taguchi's involved in a match. Yeah. Because cannot get into it so that'll be our rule of thumb i'm just glad but, okada got the win there it's cool too because like i was thinking like you were thinking kushida was gonna end up tapping ghetto out right but no they actually won that match and it makes sense because it was a, uh, a heavyweight and two juniors versus three juniors right absolutely chaos reigns supreme and not one but two matches so great stuff yeah, here for that chaos, stable yeah chaos is Chaos is destroying everyone right now. And Ghetto's just like, yeah, we did it. Ghetto's got to be so happy because they won. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like Ghetto's been eating a lot lately. And, yeah, they got a win here. So that's got to put him in a good state of mind. Yeah, I mean, Chaos is 2-0 and so far tonight. Bullet Club 1-1. One and one, But the one loss is only because of Chaos. But, Ashton, here's the story here. We've had a lot of fun. You know, we made a lot of Ishii jokes. We got to appreciate Okada's Rainmaker. The story here, though, is that Friday, stablemates are going to collide. It's the Stone Pitbull versus the Rainmaker, Okada versus Ishii. And Rainmaker! Yeah, sorry. Exactly. I, well, no, you're absolutely right. 
And, I mean, that's just it. I feel like out of all the matches that could take place in this tournament, this one might just be my most anticipated. Because Really? I, You're anticipating this more than Okada Nakamura? I, I would have to say so, because I believe that Ishii can beat Okada. Wow. I believe you don't can. think Nakamura can? I, I believe he can as well. But see, that's the thing. Nakamura, I feel like, is, is in that top tier, whereas Ishii is really finally ascending there and taking his place there. Ah, oh, I see that's, what you're saying. Yeah, Nakamura, we all know Nakamura's capable. Hell, the guy's been a three-time world champion. That's all the proof you need. Yeah. But Ishii, I feel like, is finally coming into his own people are really starting to recognize him as the big money player that he is. Yep. And if Ishii can beat Okada, man, done. Like, I don't he's think it's a matter of him. if. I think it's a matter of when. Are you picking him Friday? Um, not necessarily. I don't know. I'm not saying that for Friday. I'm just saying I think that Ishii can beat him. Absolutely. Whether it's I on do Friday as well. or not, whether it's on Friday or not, I think it could happen in the future. Maybe even in the near future. Maybe maybe it even will happen on Friday. You never know. Seems like they aren't really super concerned with protecting Okada, making him look super strong compared to everyone else. So maybe they will have Ishii beat him. Well, I mean, Okada is beatable, as Goto proved. And yeah. so is Ishii, though, as Nakamura proved. So yeah, but something's was- got to give on Friday. Say that again? I said, yeah, but that was Nakamura, though. Yeah, it was. And it took four knees. Yeah. Four four Bomayes to get it done. Yeah, you keep saying it right now, John. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I've really been working on it in our off time. I'm not ashamed oh, of it. You've been practicing in front of a mirror? Kind of. Except, you know, there is no mirror, but I have been practicing, yes. Uh, cause I am committed to not only delivering you guys the best, but Nakamura deserves my best because he's a phenomenal athlete. But I'm yeah. Proud. Thank you. Thank you. That being but said, he- though, guys, I believe uh, we've been talking into the intermission here. So we're going to actually close this out. We will see you again for our second half. And uh, second half looks pretty loaded, I have to say. Uh, the first few matches are kind of iffy. We've got uh, Tenzan versus Fale. That looks kind of like a stinker. Shibata versus Toriano should be interesting. Tanahashi versus Doc Gallows is going to be, uh, you know, kind of an iffy one. We, we know Bad Luck Fale has already beaten Tanahashi, so maybe they'll give Gallows another rub. Uh, but then Togi Makabe, AJ Styles, that should be amazing. And Ibushi Naito, that's my match of the night contender right there. We will see you guys for part two.